Sam, tell us what is Project Waves and where you're located? Yeah, so Project Waves is a nonprofit internet service provider located in Baltimore City. Uh, As an ACP provider, we provide free to the user high speed home broadband service, uh, primarily to residents living in affordable housing communities, uh, primarily MGUs or apartment building. You said internet service provider. You built a network. Tell us about the network that you built. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get started by just saying we did build a network. Uh, we we partner with a local fiber optic provider uh, who does kind of business class services uh, for, for businesses across Baltimore City um, early on in the pandemic. Um, and they realized that they had so much latent capacity on their network and they weren't really interested in getting into the residential service marketplace. Um, and so through our partnership with this local provider, Light Cloud Hosting, uh, we actually have access to a pretty robust uh, fiber ring throughout Baltimore City uh, that allows us to deliver service to these multi-dwelling unit properties that are currently on the network. And you could have, as an organization, decided to just strictly focus on enrolling residents in the Affordable Connectivity Program, but you decided to build a network. Why why didn't you just say, let's just sign people up for ACP? Why, Why build this network? Why serve as an internet service provider in addition to ACP enrollment? That's a great question. There are a few reasons, but the biggest one I'd say most primarily is that the time is now. Um, I know like everybody that's in the audience probably understands that the capital investments in broadband expansion have hit a historic high. We are experiencing a once in a lifetime um, opportunity to really leverage those types of capital investments through programs like ARPA, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act, um, and upcoming deed funding to really change the dynamic of what infrastructure looks like in cities like Baltimore. Uh, in particular, in cities like Baltimore, where a de facto monopoly or duopoly exists uh, with like one or two large incumbents, uh, becoming responsible for serving every household. Um, we're really pushing like creation of like innovative pathways to push market competition. So for us, when we're delivering gig speed service to affordable housing communities, that really begs the question of why isn't gig speed service more ubiquitously and affordably available throughout the city? Um, so it's a, it's a couple of reasons, but the biggest two are that the time is now and uh, this is what part of, uh, this is a huge piece of the digital equity lens and the approach to ensuring that we're holding incumbent providers uh, kind of accountable for, for what they're delivering to, to customers throughout communities. Now, Devin, you actually built the network. Tell us how, tell us how and, and how you put it together and, and what it's delivering today. Sure. Um, I inherited the network right as we began our first MDU project at uh, Jonathan Square. Um, and it was done using wireless access points in the hallway. Uh, it took a long time to build out and it resulted in variable levels of service for our users, depending on um, their location in the building in relation to an access point. Um, and we had several other properties coming up and I just couldn't stand the, uh, the thought of doing an, another building using that method. Um, and that's when I came across um, Positron's G.HN um, access multiplexer product um, in which you can reuse uh, existing coax wirings or phone or phone lines or, or whatever's available in the building um, with this product to deliver gig speeds over um, over those wires to uh, to individual units. Um, this allowed us to uh, to take deployment time down to you know we 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 can get you know an, an easy building done within you know a week or two, <laughs> um, uh, and also and also re- you know resulted in uh, equitable service for everybody. Everybody gets their own you know gig speed router and their own gig speed connection. And this required that you got fiber to the building and then use the existing wiring in in these buildings, correct? Yep. So the, um, as Sam mentioned earlier, the uh, fire fire that we've been working with is named uh, Light Cloud. Um, but uh, d- depending on you know the deployment on the product, we, you know, we, we might have to get it through some other provider like Com or um, Verizon, Comcast, or Zayo, or whoever else. Um, but yeah, and those pipes are uh, ten gigs to each building. Ten gigs to each building. And now, and you're serving how many buildings now? Uh, so we are now up to what's going on six, seven buildings right. now. Yeah, we're at in six lit live, um, and we're building out uh, fiber to an additional sixteen properties at this moment. So, yeah. Oh my goodness! And so right now, you're serving how many units? Uh, about a thousand households. About a thousand households, and that, and these uh, individual tenants uh, uh, in these units, they're getting the service at no cost. 
Correct. Exactly. Because we're an ACP provider, um, and, and I get into that a little bit, uh, the ACP is is actually one of the qualification pathways to receiving the $30 per month subsidy from the Affordable Connectivity Program is if you live in subsidized housing. So 100% of our customers are actually ACP eligible. What we do is really deploy a team of customer service specialists, ACP wizards, so to speak, uh, on the ground in these properties who really interface with residents and help them get registered for the ACP prior to receiving Affordable Connectivity Program service from Project Waves. So the first step is really sitting down kind of familiarizing residents to the affordable connectivity program, um, providing them that in-person assistance with completing the application. Uh, as you know, like many customers who are experiencing uh, struggles with digital skills, just may not have an email address or may never have uploaded a document online. We'll need that help to really ensure that they're able to participate in the affordable connectivity program. Once they're enrolled, uh, we provide connectivity within 24 hours. Uh, we deploy our technicians to the property and ensure that the customer gets connected. During that time, we also ensure that every Wi-Fi enabled device in the customer's home is connected and that they understand how to recognize their network on devices like smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, um, and that they have their password easily documented, our contact information so that they can text or call us if they need assistance, but yeah. So now that the network is up and running and you're doing all this, how much is your average per user cost per month? Yeah, so our average per user cost per month fluctuates a bit depending on the geography or the geographic location. But um, on average, we're coming in below $20 per month in operating costs per for each user. Um, and this is really important, especially in a city like Baltimore. As I mentioned, we have the ACP subsidy that helps us to cover those costs. Um, in Maryland, we also have an additional $15 per month benefit uh, called the Amer Maryland Emergency Broadband Benefit Program. Uh, so we actually are able to collect uh, $45 per month per user, um, which means that we're actually bringing in revenue for the first time that allows us to invest in the expansion of the network um, into communities that, that have traditionally been digitally redlined. So, a, the, so the ACP program, as well as the state program, is vital um, in, in terms of helping to offset operational costs? 100%. Um, the time is really now. I feel like we've really hit an inflection point. Um, I know it's it's a lot to say. We're really crossing our fingers that Congress will refund a program like the ACP, but it couldn't be more important. Um, the ACP is serving tens of millions of households throughout this, the country, um, many of whom are, are online only because they have access to the subsidy. Uh, if the ACP and through that, the Maryland Emergency Broad Broadband Benefit Program uh, goes unfunded um, at the end of, of the, the ARPA money that's currently funding it, it's really going to be um, it's really going to be a crisis of connectivity, and it's going to be kind of an unprecedented moment of understanding how far a program like this got us only to be taken away. So we're really hopeful um, that the ACP becomes a permanent subsidy that is available to, to residents like those we serve. Now, Devin, uh, if we had a magic wand and assuming ACP uh, continues to be funded or is permanently funded, tell us a little bit about um, multi-dwelling units being kind of like low-hanging fruit in, 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 in targeting those particular developments. Yep. So um, as everybody knows, uh, for about 40% of Baltimore City is uh, either without or has um, uh, subpar internet service. Um, and so uh, in Working with MDUs, you know, we can close about 20% of that 40% um, uh, divide, um, and it's uh, with the with with you know with the method that we're using, you know, it, it uh, we can do this at, at scale and and uh, fast as well. And for both of you, project waves moving forward. You gave us a little hint about some of the other buildings you're targeting, but tell us what your radar screen looks like moving forward. Yeah, it's a great question. So um, right at the moment, we're really focused and we've been really laser focused on connecting um, kind of private, privately owned public housing developments or like rad properties throughout the city, just because that was a really um, kind of rapid way of, of moving forward. We're really hoping that in the next few months that we'll be able to, to start serving our first public housing, uh, like housing authority of Baltimore city owned property. Um, we're really targeting uh, housing authorities across the state of Maryland. So um, in addition, we're looking at expansion into some of the surrounding counties here in Maryland, uh, Anne Arundel, Hartford, Howard, Baltimore counties. 
um, so that we can really put our footprint out in Maryland more broadly, not just being a Baltimore City provider, but one that really is focused on kind of solving the stakes of digital equity throughout the state. Now, Devin, you, you are a Baltimore native, and I know that you spend quite a bit of time in these buildings um, and, and, and have developed relationships with people in, the, in these units. Tell, tell us a little bit about what it means to be working on the ground and, and especially being from Baltimore and, and delivering connectivity to some of these, to some folks who this is their first time getting internet access, I'm assuming. Yeah, for um, for a lot of people, you know, you 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 come into their units and they're and they're asking they're asking a lot of questions that at first you're confused about because you know you're, you're so used to just using the internet, you know, like just kind of secondhand, um, and then you realize, you know, yeah, they've they've never used it before in their lives and that they they need a lot of handholding, they need a lot of you know information and they need a lot of help, um, and uh, you know, for 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 me, you know, coming in, in a lot of these places is it, it reminds me a lot of like my childhood. It's a lot like just going like in my grandma's house. Um, you know, she, they're, they're all watching like the same kind of shows that she watches and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's, um, it, it is a good feeling to be able to, to give back to um, my community and, and, um, see people, and see people happy, you know, it really makes people like very happy to be, uh, be able to get this service because, uh, you know, um, people will, will sit there and, and tell you their stories and, you know, um, about their tragedies in life and the, how much it's, um, it's hard to afford internet. Um, among other things. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to, to help these people out. Well, I want to thank the two of you for joining us for our Building for Digital Equity event here today. And um, now I think we can turn it back over to our hosts and see if uh, there's any questions that our uh, participants have for you two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.